Hello, my lovely students. I warmly welcome you to today's class. In our class today, I'll be taking you Let Me Die Alone by John Colosa Kagbo. John Colosa Kagbo's Let Me Die Alone is quite an interesting read that talks about the African situation and this relationship with the colonial masters. John Kagbo's Let Me Die Alone like I said, it's quite an interesting read. And for this class, our lesson objective will be that at the end of the day, you have to be able to give a plot review of the literary work of art, as well as alighting the adverse effects of colonialism and imperialism in the play. You should also be able to examine the circumstances leading to Yoko's ascension to the throne of the people. Now, Maya and Yoko discussing is the introduction of this literary work of art. We see a situation where Maya, who is the paramount leader of the Mende people, try as much as possible to give the throne of his people to his wife, Yoko. Though Yoko is not the first wife, but he is so dear, she is so dear to him. Then Maya, because of how Yoko has been able to prove herself worthy before him, promised her the kingdom of the Mende people. Maya promised Yoko that after his demise, she will be able to ascend the throne of the Mende people. Yoko, on her part, was very excited, but there is a bottleneck. And what is the bottleneck? The bottleneck to Yoko ascending the throne of the Mende people is because of her sex. It is unheard of that a woman will lead the Yoko, the Mende people. She was so destructive to the extent that she became very angry. Now, the situation out of this quagmire is so hard to join the Poro court. But it's very important for us to understand that the Poro court is strictly the reserve for the male folk. Now, what is she supposed to do? The husband introduced her to the Poro court, and at the end of the day, she lost her womanhood. Now, for Gmaya, having allowed Yoko to join the Poro court, she has lost her womanhood. She can no longer give birth as a woman because of that. He's now having a drawback concerning Yoko. And what is the drawback? As far as she is concerned, Yoko being a woman will not be able to hold sway while he's gone. Or Yoko was not happy about this. Now, the governor of, in charge of the Mende people, Governor Roa, who is a colonial overlord, humiliates Banya. And how was he able to do this? When he came to Mende land, he brought out Banya, who to him has not been able to meet the demands of the people and humiliated him before the people. Now, for Gmaya, he is a leader who is appreciated by all and sundry, but there is a select group of persons who are destructed in battle and they are not happy. As a result, they plot to kill Gmaya. And who are these persons we are talking about? Lamboy, who happens to be the brother to Yoko, and Musa. Now, what is Lamboy's aim of killing Baya? Because he wants to ascend the throne. Okay? Now, he is unable to carry out this feat, so he needed an accomplice, and that he got in the person of Musa, who he blackmailed into doing his bidding. Eventually, they poisoned Baya, and they eventually killed Baya. Now, for Yoko, as a very smart lady, she was able, even before, prior to the demise of the husband, she, was, she set her machinery in place, and the very day the husband died, she took a swift action by ascending the throne of the Mende people. This was hitting below the bed for Lamboy and Musa. Now, we have very... We have two characters in the person of Jilu and Lasana. These two characters, they had amorous relationship, despite the fact that Jilu was legally married to Ndapi. 
he had this frivolous and very uh, extramarital relationship outside her wedlock, which caused a whole lot of problem. Now, for Undapi, Undapi, who happens to be the husband to Jilo, was not happy because of the wife's infidelity. And as a result, got physical with the wife by slapping her. And as it also dragged her to Yoko. Now, for Yoko, she planned a whole lot for the many people, and one of such is to expound the chiefdom. She is someone who has lofty dreams, and as a result of that, through the, her warriors, she was able to conquer lots of territories and expanded barriers and frontiers and expanded the chiefdom a great deal to the admiration of the people. Now, for Yoko, she eventually, because of her dream, moved the kingdom from Seneho to Moyaba. This was a dream of us and which she eventually achieved at the end of the day because of the loyal soldiers at her back and core. Now, because of this, she gained lots of popularity with the people. The people were very happy about her because there were lots of prosperity. The kingdom was, was expanded. The people were having a feed day conquering their enemies. And economically, they were also expanding. So the people were happy with her, and she gained lots of popularity with the people. Now, but for Lamboy, ironically, Lamboy is the brother to Yoko, but he plotted against the sister through the help of Musa and eventually in order to weave this disheartening and very terrible situation around, they kidnapped Geneva. Okay, now we have Governor Rowell, messenger, who visited the people. Now, the timing of this visit is very, very germane and it's very important for us to take note of. Now, when he visited the people, it was not okay for them to receive him at that point in time. As a result of that, he was not welcome and this did not go down well with Governor Rowell. Then Governor Rowell, Yoko at the end of the day was mandated to come down to Governor Rowell. So Yoko visited Governor Rowell, and in her absence, Lamboy had to hold sway. This visit is very, very important because it opened a whole lot of canker worm at the end of the day. Now, Yoko hands over the chiefdom to Lamboy. Lamboy has exercised so much power and authority, and because it has always been his dream to ascend the throne, he was not willing. He was no longer willing to relinquish power. So what he had to do was to plot to discredit Pope uh, Yoko at the end of the day. Now, for Governor Rowell, he imposed property law on the people. As far as the Mende people are concerned, this is a slight on them. Because you, the, as far as they are concerned, the colonial masters cannot come and be detecting to them on what and to do and what not to do. Now, remember I told you that Lamboy and Musa, they kidnapped Jennifer, and Jennifer, the the parents, Jilo and Ndapi, and even the entire community, the entire kingdom, they were searching for the pretty young girl, Geneva. Meanwhile, while the search is ongoing, Lamboy and Musa, they had plotted to indict Yoko. Okay? They made the people to understand that Yoko is responsible Yoko is responsible for the kidnap of this young lad. And the people believed, the people believed her, huh? sorry, the people believed them that Yoko is responsible for the kidnap of the very young, for the, of the very young lady. And it was not easy for her to refute. Okay, so Rowe Ro at the end of the day also reduces Yoko's territorial control. This was a very uh, deliberate move on the part of the colonial 
masters. They try to reduce this power because they feel that she is becoming too powerful for their liking. Now, we should know that Yoko, as a leader, is a very fearless leader. She was able to assert herself despite the fact that the colonial masters were not happy with her. They tried everything humanly possible to discredit her and also the fact that Lamboy was also fighting her, but she was very assertive. Now, for Yoko, what was her next move? Her next move was to assert herself and also to make the people understand that she is innocent of all that Lamboy and Musa are trying to indict her of. So Yoko's next move is the fact that as a fighter, she is ready to remain resolute against all odds to stand her ground. Now, why the search for Geneva's body was still ongoing, the people, they've jettisoned Yoko because they believe that she is a very terrible person. But at the end of the day, the young lady's body was discovered. Okay, now the discovery of Geneva's body is very important because it vindicated Yoko at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, Yoko is vindicated while Lamboy and Musa is punished by the people. Okay, so Lamboy and Musa are now seen as the terrible people and no longer Yoko. So Yoko, who was trying, who was discredited by Lambo and Musa, is eventually vindicated at the end of the day. Now, for Lambo and Musa, they they bury their heads in shame because all their plans to indict Yoko did not fall through. Their plans to discredit Yoko did not fall through, as it was not a success for them. Now, the end of the road for Lamboy and Musa, all their dreams and aspirations, their dreams of becoming the leader of the Mende people, the dream of becoming the synergy of all eyes that will be respected by all and sundry did not come to pass at the end of the day. Now, Yoko, at the end of the day, because she wants to assert herself and respect her personality, because she knows that the children is almost being taken away from her and she does not want to face that shame, she decided on her own to commit suicide at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, Yoko, knowing that she is trying to be discredited, committed suicide. So in conclusion, this lesson is a robust discourse of the plot review of the play, Let Me Die Alone. It sequentially analyzed the events that unfold in the literary work of art. And so it is my wish that you pay attention to details. Now, the, for the assignment, I would want you to give a plot review of the work Let Me Die Alone, you also alight the adverse effect of colonialism and imperialism in the play, as also examine the circumstances leading to Yoko's ascension of the throne. The honest class, I want you to remain literary conscious. Bye for now.